Hey, what's up everybody? Seattle's Gaming coming to you with another video. This is going to be the prologue, the Gathering Storm release notes for Spellbreak. Welcome to the prologue, release patch notes. We're very excited to share this release with you and can't wait to hear what you think. Prologue, the Gathering Storm will be available on Epic Game Store, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and GeForce Now on October 22nd, 2020, approximately 10 a.m. Let's dive right in. So that's less than 24 hours from now. So when this is out, uh, the patch should probably be out within a few hours. So let's go ahead and check it out and see what it says here. Clash. Our first new game mode is here. Clash is a 9v9 team deathmatch mode where two teams race to exile enough of their opponents to reach a precedented score. First one to make it wins. Basically a basic deathmatch. Clash is low on stress but high on fun. It immediately thrusts people into combat and keeps them there for the duration. Great for learning new classes, blowing off steam, practicing, or just having a good time. Each side is made up of up to three squads of three players each. Every time a player is exiled, the exiled team scores a point. The exiling team scores a point. Uh, players roam the map, gathering gear and leveling their skills, just like in Battle Royale. The circle will lead players to designer placed areas that ensure good gameplay for both teams. Upon being exiled, you keep all of your gear and levels, but also drop a copy of your equipment that can be loaded by the other players. After being exiled, you respawn near your team, high above the battlefield, with full health, armor, and two armor shards. Note, spell rate game modes are not set in stone. We'll be experimenting and rotating the available modes over time. We want spell break to grow and change and not be the same thing forever. Per the above, with the introduction of Clash, we'll be disabling duos. Okay, so no more duos, which kind of sucks. Um, Clash should be good. It looks like it's going to be very fun. It is your basic deathmatch. Uh, three squads of three and uh, you guys battle it out so yeah I definitely look forward to this I've heard good things about this I'm excited to have a new mode and able to switch it up a little bit and uh, try to keep the game fresh so that's good okay prologue chapter <clears throat> this release marks the introduction of the chapter system in Spellbreak which if you guys don't know it's kinda like the battle pass and other games this is the first take and we're going to be listening to your feedback and evolving it further as we go forward. Earn reputation by completing missions for Avira Emberdane and unlock 25 levels of rewards including exclusive outfits including an epic one, cloudburst, afterglows, titles and cards, gold. Um, come back every week for new quests or level your reputation up by playing and earning XP as normal. As a celebration to the prologue, we're making it free for everyone. So that's free. You don't have to pay for it like the other battle passes. At least this first one's going to be free. We'll see how they do it in the future. Um, but yeah, that's wonderful there. It's great. Always great to get free cool stuff. Um, check out your progress in the quests and chapters tabs and see the story as it evolves over time. For more about the chapter systems, take a look at this post. And that's pretty cool. The chapter system is going to be good. I do look forward to see all of the cool um, items and uh, skins and gold, all that good stuff that we can earn uh, just by playing the game. So that's great that it's free. Okay, Hallowed Eve. It's time to get spooky with a bunch of new cosmetics arriving in the shop. We've also added bundles so you can buy a set of items at the same time for a discounted price. That's going to be pretty decent. I'd like to see what these bundles are. Um, the Halloween skins have been posted on their Twitter. You can also take a look at like two videos ago that I made. It does show um, the skins and what they're called. Um, but I definitely look forward to seeing these skins. I'm excited. I'm going to try to pick them all up. So. Matchmaking, we made a change to how lobbies are filled to allow them to better populate with players. Now, as more players join, the match countdown timer increases up to a certain point, though it's still capped at a few minutes, so that as long as new players are coming in, they'll be placed in an existing lobby instead of closing down the lobby and spawning a second one. Basically, we're trying to fill one game completely instead of making two half-full games, which is going to be great. There's going to be a lot more uh, real players and less bots. That's basically what that's talking about. So, yeah, good for them. That's uh, definitely something that needed to be done. So, yeah. Okay. 
Gameplay. Bug fixes that deserve a call out. Fix an issue with lightning strike sorcery, not striking players in the outside edge of the sorcery. Immediately jumping upon stepping in a puddle no longer prevents damage from correctly being applied. Fix a bug where shadow step stepping into toxic cloud could cause the dashed component of vanishing mist to not trigger, uh, which is not good at all. So yeah, I'm glad they fixed that. Let's go to these talents here. Talents, new talents. In this release, we're adding three brand new talents. They've unlocked for all players from day one, so get in there and try them out. Make new builds and let us know what you think. Vigor, it's of mind, it costs three of your talent points. Uh, description, it gives you max health, 25, 30, 35, and 50 as you level them up in game. So that's a lot of extra health there. Um, that could be really bad for a lot of people <laughs> um, and good for others. Uh, foresight, it is body, it costs three talent points. The description, see future storms and mana vaults and see enemies on the mini map every 10, 9, 8, and 5 seconds. Um, I guess that's as you level them up. You get to see people a lot quicker um, by using, by having that foresight. Um, so that should be pretty good for people that are. Uh, having issues with finding people this should definitely help ambidextrous here's the good one I believe uh, it is gonna be spirit it will cost three talent points gain level one skill of offhand gauntlet class offhand spell mana cost minus 5 10 15 and 25 percent as you level it up and that's gonna be great I run tox main and fire is secondary so now my fire is gonna be able to have uh, the combust with it so yeah, this is going to be pretty crazy, ambidextrous. Um, for more about talents, please see here. Let's take a look. Talent changes. So there's been some changes done. Let's take a look and see exactly what it is. Vital Stone's immune effect now correctly protects against being pulled by a tornado. Finder's Keepers cost is now one, down from two. Uh, talent points in description and now reads chance to find potions from chests. 25% chance. Chance to find scrolls from chest 50, 75, 100, and 150 as you level up. Um, note the description is slightly inaccurate. It increases the chance to find potions and shards. There you go. Finders Keepers has a struggle to find a place outside of a very specific case, and we've wanted to buff it for a while now with the changes to consumables. It seems like a good time to expand its scope. I think it's a great time to actually uh, be able to find potions and shards as well. Um, out of chest, that's crazy. Uh, Fortitude, cost is now two, down from three talent points. Fortitude's been overshadowed by other body talents and we want to make it more appealing to lowering, by lowering its cost. So, Fortitude, I mean, uh, it does give you one free hit from getting hit without damage. Um, I don't really use it, but I know uh, quite a few people out there do, so that should be good for them. It uh, costs less now. Um, scavenging, cost is now two up from one talent point. Scavenging is always a great deal, too great of a deal, in fact, especially with the introduction of some of the new talents. So, scavenging has been bumped up one talent point, so that's going to affect the way that you run your builds. Um, yeah, it's still going to be good to run though, and we'll see how these other talents actually work out for us. Fervor. <clears throat> Cost is now three, up from two talent points. Long the most dominant pick of any talent category. Fervor was too often a no-brainer for what it gave. This also indirectly lowers the power of some classes slash skills as well. Um, so yeah, it's, Fervor definitely helps out a lot. Uh, with tons of classes and uh, yeah the builds are gonna have to be a little bit different now that it's three instead of two so yeah we'll see how it works um, escape us now reads run speed plus three on damage taken run speed plus one two three four one three five uh, every five seconds so as it levels up we've added a hefty chunk of base movement speed to escape us and it's always on escape us is now for escaping engaging and just running around <laughs> Okay, Thirsty now reads consume speed 35, 50, 65, 90% faster. Consumables replenish nearby teammates' health and armor for 50% efficiency. And of course, that um, speeds up there are as it levels up. 
throughout the game, the more scrolls that you get. Um, with the changes to the consumables and more plans on the way, we need to show we need to slow thirsty down a bit as well as make it explicit that it only affects healing and armor. If we want to commit to it sharing all consumable effects to 50%, we'd likely have to rework it fairly significantly in the process. And yeah, I get that, but um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm definitely excited for all these changes. I'm kind of iffy about some of them. But, you know, it takes a, takes a while to tweak a game until it's, you know, perfectly great and balanced. So, we'll see. Consumables. After using a consumable, the player's vital bar shows how much they will heal over the duration of the consumable. An often requested feature, you'll now be able to just see how much you'll heal as it's happening. Uh, which I don't think that's a big deal, but that's fine uh, new small health potions and small armor shards after drinking for two seconds heals you for 15 second health over five seconds after consuming for two seconds gives you 15 armor over five seconds those are common rarity they stack up to six in a hot bar slot they drop in stacks of two these are for quick top ups in combat as they and since they stack to six you can carry around a bunch of them since they're common and come in pairs you'll also find lots of them these can be very effectively in combat to give a quick jolt to your vitals and yeah it's definitely been an issue I think um, here lately with finding consumables heals and shards but yeah that's good um, the current small versions that you're used to have been renamed given a new rarity and had their values tweaked up a smidge for better rounding but are otherwise unchanged so there you go health potions and armor shards after drinking for three seconds heals you t for 25 health over 10 seconds after consuming for three seconds gives you 25 armor over 10 seconds these are now uncommon rarity they still stack up to two we're adding a new potion type called Safeguard that refills both health and armor. These are primarily for out of combat regeneration, but if you can find a longer window mid-fight, it'll help you recover in a big way. Um, so the Safeguard is going to be pretty good. It will up both health and armor um, after you drink it. And yeah, if you can find a, somewhere to do it in battle, I'm sure it'll help out a whole lot. Let's go ahead and take a look at this Safeguard potion a little bit closer here. Um, after drinking for 5 seconds, give you 25 health and armor over 10 seconds. These are epic rarity. Uh, they take up a hot bar slot but cannot be stacked. Um, so that's something to think about. Large safeguard potion. After drinking for 8 seconds, gives you 50 health and armor over 10 seconds. These are legendary rarity. They take up a hot bar and cannot be stacked. That's amazing there. That's going to be crazy. Uh, knowledge potion after drinking for one second gives you two bonus charges for your rune and your sorceries This game's gonna start getting crazy with all these new potions Especially that knowledge potion that is nuts. These are epic rarity. They take up a hot bar slot But cannot be stacked um, Yeah, that's gonna be crazy. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work, but uh, I guess we'll find out on to miscellaneous the main menu bar has been slightly reordered all players now start with the title breaker by default emotes now loop in the store and collections menus artifacts now freeze if the player is frozen frozen boulder has improved vfx and material new sounds added for when players use consumables Windows fixes. Spell break ID should now always be visible in the account management and or at a friend's screen. Switch. Switch now supports gyro controls. Hopefully fix the black screen issue for real this time. We're really sorry about the taking so long to fix. Uh, players with their system dates set before August 18th are now able to log in. Just in case you need to be a time traveling island hopper for some reason. Okay, so they fixed uh, the black screen hopefully for you switch people I know that was a big issue um, so yeah so there you go PlayStation 4 fix a bug causing the flash free sorcery target indicator to display an incorrect smaller radius until the player moves the camera fix an infinite loading screen caused by signing out of PSN while on loading screen I also hope they fix the game crash when you go to your friends list we'll have to wait and see Xbox One fixed crash caused by losing internet connection during screen transitions resolved an issue causing frame rate hitching when picking up items 
Fix an assortment of Xbox crashes. Fix a bug causing flash freeze sorcery target indicator to display an incorrect smaller radius till the player moves the camera. Uh, that was just like the uh, Switch, I believe. Or, <clears throat> yeah. So, anyway. All platforms. When servers are down for maintenance, the client now properly reports that instead of giving an authentication error, uh, when a player is exiled from a game in a party with players still in game, they are no longer incorrectly tabbed as in match when they return to the lobby. Fix a bug causing the shop tabs UI to become corrupted after idling on it for a long time. If a player fails to enter correct account information, they'll now be taken back to the login screen. The board emote now has a correct icon. Parties will no longer be broken up due to network hiccups. Fix an issue causing users with controllers to be repeatedly prompted to press the confirm button through lost password flow even after confirming. Um, users who exit out of the current match and ready up are now able to unready while party members are in game. Fix the bug causing some users to randomly disband from a party after a match concludes. Sound effects of a cancelled sorcery will no longer play twice. Fix the rare bug that prevented voice chat from being enabled. Players can now see login queue countdown when logging into Spellbreak with high server load. Adjusted Nature's Bounty Cloudburst color scheme to better match preview icons. So that's couple of few things that they put in there um, that's going to be across all platforms uh, we do have a few more things here uh, fix a bug bug causing unlock cards to appear squished when viewed from the rank up reward notification exiled players no longer get interaction button hints as nice it would be to drink that potion it feels a little mean to taunt you uh, fix a bug causing the cursor to lose focus when receiving a party invite on the party invite selection section of the friend screen. Uh, sound effects for the menu and title screen, mana recharge, and mana depletion are now correctly affected by the sound effects volume slider. Improved tracking on emote will when using a mouse. Setting voice input volume to zero now correctly mutes teammates. When one player leaves a party or two or more when all of their teammates are ready, the party no longer instantly joins a match, which is good, I guess. Um, there's a lot of things they fix in here that are really going to improve the quality of life. Uh, fix a number of typos. These were the source of deep shame. Um, fix a number of untranslated strings. Fix a bug causing the spectate camera to focus on the lobby map. Instead of another player, when the spectate button is pressed immediately after being exiled. Fix an issue causing lag when getting exiled. Fix a bug causing the incorrect class icon to appear next to unlock skill up to mage rank up. Up on mage rank up. And of course fix a whole bunch of miscellaneous crashes. And again, I hope they fix the crash where... For PlayStation, um, when you go to your friends list and it gives you the blue screen and the game just crashes, that's that's not good. You want to get on, you want to play with some friends. I hope they got that fixed. Anyway, this has been the patch notes um, for the prologue that's going to be released tomorrow, um, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and that is the 22nd of October, 2020. It's only a few hours away, so I definitely look forward to it. I hope to see you guys out in the Hololands. I hope this helped. Um, go ahead and smash the like and hit subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next stream. Thanks for watching. Peace.